How to make great first dates. Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach. And today I'm talking about how to make great first dates. Now, personally, I think the best kind of first date is when you just meet up for a drink or a coffee, obviously depending on how how old you are, you know, or, you know, depending on whether or not you like to drink or, you know, it could be, you know, you don't like drinking that much and you prefer to meet out somewhere where you can just have some tea or coffee or something like that. But the best first date is something like that, something simple that basically you can easily escape from because if this is someone that you've met online and you don't know very well, um, then when you go out for a drink, it's so much more easier to leave if you just plan to meet up with them for a drink. Because if you meet up with them for a sit down meal and you, you know, you're gonna have like a few courses, then you know, it's very hard to get away from that kind of person and you're kind of forced then basically to spend a good couple of hours with them. Whereas if you just meet up for a drink, you know, a drink could be for just half an hour or it could be for 45 minutes or it could be an hour. It doesn't have to be for very long. So basically, if you go on a date with someone and it's just a drink, you know, it's very easy for you to be able to tell whether or not you uh, like them or not. And then you can basically leave if you don't like them. And if you do like them, then it's easy for you to actually continue the date. So that means if you do actually get on really well with them and you realize that you do actually really like them, then you can do other things. You can go out for dinner after that, or you could go out for a walk, or you could find other things that you could do to spend time together. Whereas if you don't like them, you could easily just say, well, it was nice to meet you, thanks for the drink, and and go. Um, it's much more easier to do that kind of thing. Whereas a sit down meal or something like that, it does restrict you a lot. And I've heard of people like making like huge plans on first dates with people they don't know. Like they make a picnic or something, or they, you know, you know, do something like a, a like a big activity that they can do, like they paint or something, or um, yeah, they go out painting, or you know, they bring like canvases and paint for them to do and stuff like that. And they just invest so much time into things that should be really like a second maybe a second or third date or something else later down the line that you can do as a couple, right? You don't wanna be restricting yourself. You don't wanna be doing like these kinds of things that invest a lot of time and effort on your part. Whereas if you go for a drink, you know, the most, if you're just getting a coffee that you're gonna spend is just a couple of, this is a couple of pounds, it's just gonna be a couple of quid. Or if you're from America, it would just be a few dollars. Whereas if you go out for a meal, it's probably gonna cost like loads of money. It's probably gonna cost, you know, I don't know, a lot more than if you just met up for a drink. And if you like, you know, spend a lot of time making an effort, like making a picnic, you know, this is creating a lot of time, a lot of effort into someone you don't really know that well yet. And you know, that person doesn't deserve that time and effort yet because you don't know whether or not if, they, if they're the right for you. And obviously you wanna be with someone who is right for you and you wanna put your effort into things, into people that you know a lot better. You don't wanna put this kind of effort into strangers because you just don't know who they are. So for example, if you design like a great first date and basically the first date is like you go out for a picnic and you bring like canvases that you two can paint on and do things like that, then when, well, if this, if you don't like this person, if they're really annoying and you're, you know, having to spend all this time now with them, you've got to eat the food, you've got to do the paintings, you know, you've got to do all this kind of stuff, all these like unique things with someone who you might not even like, who you might find really annoying and you've put all this effort, all this time, all this money into someone who, you know, doesn't even isn't even someone that you want to continue dating and seeing after this. So just meet up for something simple like a drink so you can have a chat, so you can read each other's vibes, see if you get on well. And if you two do get on well, then you can continue the date by going out for a meal. Um, you can continue the date by going out for a walk, doing something else. And then later down the road, then you can do something more unique. Then you can put a little bit more effort into the dates to make them more interesting, to make them you know uh, more fun and enjoyable, whatever it may be right? But also, you know, if you need like a lot of stuff to make a date interesting, then you kind of need to consider whether or not, you know, why am I doing this? Why am I creating all of this effort into someone who 
I don't know that yet. Like what? Because you you can make anything fun. Like I believe you can make any kind of situation fun. You don't need to make a grand gesture date or do something big, do something really massively creative to make a date interesting. I believe the best. You know, if you two really get on well, you don't need anything to make the date more interesting. All you two need is each other and a good conversation and to be with, around each other, you know, and, and to go off of each other's energy and vibe and having kind of like bouncing off that ear for each other, you know, bantering and stuff. If you've got that, then you don't need anything really that much. You could, you know, always go out for a drink with them and it will still be fun and amazing because you two get on so well. You don't need to do massive amounts of effort into dates, especially if you two get on well to begin with. So you don't really need to put in much effort if you two get on well anyway, right? Um, but if you do want to do something special, then do it for someone who actually deserves it and who, you know, you, you get along with already and who puts in mutual effort. Because you might put a big effort into a first date and this person doesn't put in as much effort. Right, so then you've just put, wasted all of this effort into someone who's not really that interested, who's not really putting in the mutual effort. So save those special kind of dates that you have planned in your head, those wild imagination kind of dates that you have for people who have already put in mutual effort, who you know really likes you and you really like and you've been out on a few dates with and you get on really well and you know that it's gonna be just an add-on thing to make the experience more fun. But you shouldn't need these extra add-on things like um, bringing a board game, bringing a puzzle, uh, bringing art to do, um, you know, making a picnic. You don't need to do that for someone who, you know, you get on well with anyway, really. Um, and you shouldn't be doing it, definitely shouldn't be doing for someone for someone who hasn't put in the mutual effort yet. It should be later on down the road if you're going to do that kind of stuff. If you're enjoying the video so far, then please leave a like on it and please do subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if there's anything you'd like me to discuss in a future video, then please leave it down in the comments. Thank you so much. So let's talk about the vibe that you want to give off on first dates because that's really important. Um, so obviously you want to be positive, you want to be happy, you want to be smiling, you want to be having a great time, you want to be enjoying yourself. Um, you don't want to be bringing up any negative, um, controversial topics. So try and avoid politics, try and avoid religion, try and avoid, you know, the current economical climate and things like that. Try to steer away from topics that could be controversial or negative that could make you both feel sad. You want the first date to be an uplifting, fun, enjoyable experience, especially if you two are getting on, right? So if you two are getting on, then the best thing for you to do is to continue having more fun, right? To continue having more fun by like bantering with each other, having a laugh, talking about fun things, talking about your dreams, your hopes, your aspirations in life. And you also wanna make sure, because I see a lot of people go wrong with this, is they just sit there and they just start talking and talking and talking and talking about themselves forever and talking about topics that they're interested in. Whereas um, the best thing for you to do um, and this is what I learned in the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, is you talk to that person in terms of the things that they are interested in, in, that they find fun. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't sometimes talk about yourself. It doesn't mean that you can't talk about things that you are also interested in. But, um, you know, put a lot of focus and attention on them. Try and find out who this person is. Because I see a lot of people going wrong by talking about themselves. And it's like, why are you on a date with someone if you're just there to talk about yourself? It's very selfish to do that. If you're just going to sit there and talk about your accomplishments or talk about your problems and the things that are only important to you, it completely disregards the other person. The whole point that you're there is to is to meet this person, to get to know this person. So by um, a, a mission, you should be really, really fascinated by this person. You should be wanted to know everything about them. So ask them about their friends. Ask them about the best bonds that they've ever created in their life with people. You know, ask them who they're the most closest to. Ask them about their parents. Ask them about, you know, ask them about their life. Life. Don't just talk about yourself. You know, if you're really fascinated and want to know this person, want to know if this person is the right match for you, then you need to ask them lots of questions. You need to let them do most of the talking. And, you know, it could be the case that, you know, you can still talk about yourself and they'll probably, if they're interested in you, and this is a good way to tell if someone is interested in you, is they'll ask questions about you. Whereas if they do just sit there and talk about themselves and they never ask questions about you, ever, 
then you know that this person perhaps isn't really invested in you. So, you know, just keep on asking them questions. Obviously, make sure that the questions are positive and things that they will enjoy answering, like, oh, what are your dreams? Or, you know, what are your hobbies? What are the things that you really love? Tell me about your, your strongest friendships. Tell me about the best places you've been on holiday. Tell me about all these enjoyable, you know, tell me about your enjoyable experiences of life and what you think about life and all that kind of stuff. You know, ask these kinds of positive questions um, and they'll love to answer those kinds of things because it's, it's fun and enjoyable to talk about. So another thing that you need to keep a lookout for is the red flags. So please watch this video on never ignore red flags because when you um, start dating someone, it can be very, um, very easy to just focus on how beautiful or handsome they are and ignore the red flags because that's what tends to happen to a lot of people. They go on a date with someone, they think they're absolutely gorgeous and then they just fail to basically uh, recognize anything bad that they may be saying because they are basically falling head over heels for someone um, because of how they look or the how, way that they dress or the way that they say things. You know, it could be a lot of things that make you feel attracted to someone. It might not necessarily be the physical things, but um, you know, that's what usually happens. You get kind of like hypnotized by their beauty in a way, hypnotized by their handsomeness right? And then you fail to recognize anything that they say that may be a red flag. And this is something that I did. So here's an example from me and from my own life. You know, when I started dating a girl uh, seven or eight years ago now, um, it was my first proper relationship. And um, w within like the first few weeks of dating them, she asked me, um, oh, what would you do if I cheated on you? She asked me that, but I failed to, and even then I felt kind of like, well, that's a bit of a weird question to ask. But I carried on dating her and I carried and I stayed with her because I thought that oh that's she they were, I was just I basically just ignored it right even though it did feel uneasy to me at the same time and I did feel quite upset about that question and guess what happened down the down the road she did cheat on me she did eventually cheat on me and it was all because I got wound up by the way that she looked and things like that and how fun it was to be around her I got I got completely intoxicated with that and ignored the red flags so never ignore red flags. Um, so uh, be very skeptical when you go on these kinds of dates as well. Listen to what they say and what and see what they do and things like that. Be very observant of them because this they're going to be showing you basically how they're going to be later on down the road. Do not get hypnotized by their beauty, by their looks, by their handsomeness, whatever it may be. Um, and that's basically you know some good tips on what you can do when you're on a first date with someone. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like coaching with me, then please go to www.christineloveridge.com. Thank you so much for watching and I shall talk to you guys again very soon. Goodbye guys.